Though it is Sunday morning, the time when we take the time to thank our patrons over on Patreon. We start off with our gold members, Brendan Myers, James Johnson, Ryan Turford, Mr. Egg Shen, Zach Bradshaw, Nasty Boots and Tammy, Joel Brooks, Mr. JB himself. And I want to do a special little uh, real quick shout out to uh, to Chibi. Chibi's been supporting us for a while. And man, thank you, Chibi. For all the all the love and all the stuff that you do for us, we appreciate. Now onto the show. They're breaking down all the news and they're making it nice. Good for a cower and Bowser, all their business advice. Gonna answer your questions, gabbing on and on. If you like what you hear, go check out the Patreon. The Nintendo Guru, yeah, his name is Bobby. He loves all things Nintendo except maybe Kirby. And the greatest co host in all of the land, you know. It's not like Connor, it could be like the past If we ran Nintendo What is up everybody and welcome to episode 179 of If We Ran Nintendo I am Bobby the Nintendo Guru Joined by the greatest co-host in all the land Mr. Sean Capra. Bobby, bring in the Christmas heat, man. Holy cow. I, this is not the cadence and tone we had just like five seconds ago. You're ready to bring it. You just turned it on. Let's go. It's it for a Nintendo. It's, <laughs> it's Christmas. It's time, man. It's time to go. Oh, it's I'm glad, go. man. All Listen. right. You just got my heart going. <laughs> Woo wee. Everybody, stop what you're doing. You're oh, focusing boy. on this right now. You're not Here multitasking. It's it for a Nintendo time. Let's go. Is that what it is? I love it. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. How are you? You got a great uh, Splatoon shirt on, a little pirate, little squid guy. Yeah, I man. like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Django, uh, Django Snow over on uh, T Public. Nice, uh, great, dude. Great artist, good friend. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, this one, phenomenal, phenomenal work. And, You're looking uh, sharp, dude. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, man. You got like your chin strap kind of looking all nice. and It's kind of white. And... It's kind of white. No, you look good. You got look it. good. Hey, would you ever do Santa work? No. Would you ever be a Santa Claus at a mall or something like that, bringing Which joy to, to kids across, across the country? Was that, was that a fat joke? No, it was a graying joke. <laughs> that was a... You don't have to be fat to be Santa Claus. No? I don't think so anymore. Uh, I think I, I think Santa Claus started eating like gluten-free yeah, cookies or, so. or vegan cookies or well, something. I don't know, yeah, man. I think he's... Depends on what house you live in, really. I, I I think I think Kevin Smith might be might be Santa Claus, and so he's he's fine. Not anymore, not anymore. I know that's what I'm saying, man. He he's changed completely, but yeah. could have been Santa Claus before, and he lost all the weight, and now yeah, he's still Santa Claus. I don't understand. Claus. He's older than me, and he's got no gray hair. He looks good. How is well, that even possible? I don't know, man. There's like just for men stuff. Like yeah, you can he you can get dying. rid of the gray. Got to be dying. I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna dye my beard. I don't want it to be like full-on color i think di- dying like, the beard like, sounds like a real pain in the butt like yeah, i don't even little, like having a beard because it's it's too much maintenance as it is well i'm gonna alone. shave uh, what i want to do is i want to lose a little weight and then shave off and just have the goatee yeah but i don't yeah, have a jawline so the right now i'm so fat that my my cheeks go to my my chest so it's, yeah so it's just a it's just a, <laughs> a line down so the so the, i basically need to draw a jawline with my beard so okay. that's you know so that's what i gotta do Okay. So that's my goal. That's my. That's you my. Start wearing like colored shirts from on a regular basis. That's my New Year's <laughs> resolution. That I'm gonna. I'm gonna I don't even want to do a New Year's resolution. I want to do just like a January goal. Like I like New Year's is like a like it's too much for the whole year, man. It's too much for. Yeah. Like yeah. I just want to like if I can lose a couple pounds in January, like I'd be good with that. You know what I mean? A couple pounds, Jesus! I need like a couple hundred. Anyway, listen. Let's kick I, this episode I, off like we do each and every episode with our shout outs. Geek outs, geek outs. Um, I would love to talk to you about Star Wars, but the internet will light me on fire. So Did you I'm not going to do that. I watched it. Oh, I, uh, okay. I I went on Friday night, mm-hmm. and um, I'm not going to tell anybody how I feel about it. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that anyway. you're really allowed. I just want to wait anyway. I don't want to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and if anybody, it's just for, I saw it because I didn't want it to be spoiled. I really the first like Force Awakens was spoiled. A big moment in that movie was spoiled for me, um, and that just ruined everything. Yeah. And I just I really I just tweeted about it a moment ago. Like I hate what's going on on Twitter. You can't even talk about these Star Wars movies without mm. like you can have an opinion about it. That's totally fine. Oh, but like people yeah. are are literally attacking each other and like starting like it, like ending friendships over this it stuff. Is. It's absolutely yeah. it's embarrassing, really. Pretty much. I don't like it. Pretty I don't much. like it. Um, uh, but I was playing Shovel Knight earlier, um, and, I, and I'm getting my butt kicked on this stupid card game. I get it, but man, this game. Have you, have you played it all? The King of, King of Cards. Yeah, I'm not really a fan. 
But I've been, no? I've been nah, I don't like oh, I like I, the card game is tricky and it's kicking my butt, but the gameplay is fun, man. I, and just, I like the, the... No, I just like Shovel Knight. He's the only one I like to play with. I don't really. I'm not a fan of like Plague Knight and Specter Knight and now King Knight. I'm not. Yeah, I skipped those other two. I haven't. I have them, but I just haven't gone around. To I them. had them too, and I just I started them. I'm just like this is not. Like I was telling Pat last week on Nintendo Talk, like you, you're playing, and you see the levels, and the levels are Shovel Knight levels. Like, you know, mm-hmm. and I played so much with Shovel Knight that I just want to do those maneuvers, but those maneuvers don't work. Yeah. And it's like, I just, you start to lose, it's breaking my brain to try to figure you out how to do change. this. change, I get it. I just hate it. I hate it. So, fine, Bobby. I'm not a fan of it. Um, I want to I start off my shout outs. I got quite a few. Uh, Danny Ward and Benji Kong over on the Switch Island. Nice. Uh, those guys do fantastic work. And it's about a year ago that we even recognized and realized who these guys were. Oh, the song, um, man. Yeah, the song came next month or the end of the year review that they did, uh, Benji did via rap, and really threw them in a, in a spotlight. But those guys are fantastic, man. I like, I, I love I love Danny and, and Benji and what they do over there, and they just do fantastic work and tip my cap to them. Nice, guess. man. Uh, nice. Well, i got to give a shout-out to my wife. Okay. Uh, she just takes care of absolutely everything. We'll just kind of – maybe we'll leave it at that, man. <laughs> maybe, I'm just a, maybe you should leave it at that. <laughs> I, I think I'm just an absolute idiot, and I'm just lucky to be alive, and I'm lucky to have her. <laughs> you're, lucky, you're lucky she didn't kill you. That's all I'm going to say. And that's what I'm saying. That's yeah, what I'm saying. I'm just lucky uh, she didn't just you know, murder me in my sleep. Could, but if, uh, I, if I showed you messages that I got, you would be like, oof. Yeah, I was no, actually I know. scared. <laughs> I, was mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. I was like – Oh, there's some death going to happen today. Uh, yeah. Shout out to, uh, uh, to, to Dude Reno. Oh, who, nice, man. Who made his triumphant return. And, uh, you know, I, I just I love seeing Dude around and showing up in the chats and, and, and all that stuff. Like, the guy, I love the guy. guy he just is, supported us for so long yeah, in man. so many ways, man. And he, honestly, like, I feel like he takes it like a personal responsibility to support as many creators as he possibly can. Yeah. Like, he's around everywhere, man, and I know that it means a lot to him, and um, I just want, well, to piggyback off here, uh, to to let him know that it means a lot to all of us, man. We all see it. We all recognize it. The community sees it as well. Like, he inspires other people to support at his level as well, which is awesome. Yeah, he's, he's pretty awesome. Um, mm-hmm. Next up, I got, I got Joel Brooks and Tony Baker. Nice. Who, this week, I jumped into Dauntless with this. Yeah, guys. I saw that. Man, they just they they taught me, and yep. I am now hooked on this game. Yeah, you um, are, dude. I bought the hunt pass. And Did you really? Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh <my laughs> what happened was I was sitting there. It's it's very Fortnite esque, you know, like yeah. in the whole yeah. presentation and the demeanor and the way the way you play the game and all that. I was literally just playing a hunt when we started this call, and uh, or I just finished a hunt when we started this call, but. I'm sitting there, and me and Joel are kind of talking about, you know, what are we doing, and with with the with the, with the hunt pass, and next thing I know, Joel bought it, and I was just like, well, I wasn't gonna buy it yet. And I was like, now I feel guilty because I I kind of talked you into it. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna buy it too. <laughs> so I bought it, and man, it's it's so fun. It, yeah. It's basically Monster Hunter, sure, but just such a, a an easier access point to it. Yeah. You don't need to know a million things, and you go in and you just you just have a good time, man. It's so nice. much fun, dude. I saw you playing that, man. Yeah. And I, Joel Brooks is a madman, dude. Like he buy like talk to him about Brawlhalla. Like check out like the the money he spent on the, on that game and all these games, dude. Yeah. He has, dude. He's so encouraging. That's yeah. the thing about him, is I just want to play all games with him. Yeah, and he's such a nice man too. Like it's fun to it's fun to hang out with him. Yeah. He's been hanging out with me in the Discord at four in the morning, yeah. just because like I haven't been sleeping very well <laughs> for some stupid reason. But he's always up. He's always willing to hang out, dude. He's a great man. Yeah, and also, good. of course, Tony Baker as well. Yeah, I should, we should we, we're on just opposite ends of the city from each other. But you know, we all hand, like and and um, Zach Erickson, we're all in the same city, dude. We're all here. I still understand how you guys are hanging out all the time. We um, should. Final final shout out that I have goes to Thunderful Zoink Games and Imaging nice. Forum, who actually sent me a Christmas card this past. No week. way! Yeah, man, uh, just showed up in the mail, and uh, those people are so nice. Like yeah, man. really, man, they, they've they've embraced me from day one, um, and uh, although we don't talk as much as we used to, because they've kind of hit that rock star status and. 
but we still from time to time we'll we'll reach out and touch base and talk and it man they're just wonderful people they really that's are that's the best that's and the I, best I, I love the relationship and the friendship that i have i mean like i could literally reach out to brian right now and just be like hey man you got some codes that i can get for and boom i'd have them like mm -hmm. no, doesn't even blink an eye he's not like who are you like he it's just always been supportive of anything that I ask and, and do, and it's really, really touching to know that we have that it, you know that I've built that f friendship with them guys. It's just awesome. So that's the best, man. Out of just like out of out of what, like just a drive up to see a game. You're know, like, yeah, I'll be right over there. Yeah. Like, how many years ago? Like the classic story of yeah, that was like yeah. three years ago now. Four back years, in the four day, years back ago. in Something Steamroll like Dig One days, man. Yes, yeah, Dig Dig One heist when they were doing heist. Um, can I give a shout out to Jonathan Brown? No, John. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Well, sorry, I mean, JD. Yes, I tried, man. <laughs> I know you always tell me. You always tell me no. It's like I'm. Anyway, uh, Jonathan Brown and Ribo and everybody else who is part of um, JB's special song, uh, letting Ribo know how much we uh, appreciate and love him. Um, just a really special song. You guys should check him out. Um, at uh, what is he still Purple Monkey M? Mm -hmm. What or P Monkey? What the heck is his Twitter? Okay, no, I'm sorry. Purple, Purple Monkey Entertainment. It's PM. I don't know. What it's, is it's, what is your thing, Jonathan Brown? You got to you got to help me. Have it together that, but... before you before you start shouting somebody out. <sighs> I write all my notes down. Who I'm shouting out? Who I'm? You know, you're over here like just. I still can't find it. Swinging by your by your it's it's purple, purple M thirteen. Thank you. That's so. What it's always been. It's it's that was what it's always hard. been. Yeah. All right. Amazing song. You can find it on on his Twitter. Go listen um, to it. But it's available everywhere, everywhere Spotify. Yeah, Apple I know Music, on iTunes and whatever. Apple yeah, Music. it's really. I'm actually going to play it at the end of the video show today. So thank you for helping me out uh, because I botched that shout out pretty good. So yeah, that made it better. I can get a copy of it. I got to find a copy of it. That's the problem. Um, mm -hmm. But I want to try to. I want to try to play it at the end. Of the, it, it's such a good song. You and, say it like you put together the audio version. I got to put together the audio version. So I'll send you the. I'll send you the thing. I'll send you the, the track. I got to put the. If you're putting it at the end. Yeah, but I, I got. I'll I'll send it to you. It's all good. What are you talking? How are you gonna? Never mind. Yeah, exactly. I edit my video. I don't put the, your I audio know. in my video. Never mind. I'll let, I'm gonna edit yeah, this I, out. Exactly. Edit it out. Well, I'm gonna leave it in because because this is the unruliness that I get every week. You know what I mean? Like this guy telling me that my audio stinks and he's just yelling at me and beating me up and and by the way, Ribo Ribo of course corrected you. He said, "He said last week's episode or the Yumi pre episode was bouncing from the left ear to the right ear." <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, um, okay. So the first uh, first topic we have, I we're basically pulling all the topics off of Patreon this week because we didn't have an episode last week, and so this week we took those epi those questions and this week's questions and kind of threw them together. Uh, so we start off with the first one is from Lee Navarro, um, and it says, uh, with the announcement that MLB, the show will now be coming to other platforms, what other non Nintendo exclusive properties would you try to make a deal for? Um, and I think that, see, this is a tough one because I feel like part of me feels like this this all came together not necessarily by Sony mm -hmm. but I think I think the MLB had a little bit to do with it um and I think they put maybe a little bit of pressure on cuz it might have been a thing where they were just like hey um we need cuz I know there's a collective bargaining agreement there and I know that the Players Association gets money and Major League Baseball gets money out of those games mm -hmm. with the licensing agreement and stuff. But it's not an exclusive license. It's not like Madden. It was. It was. Well, no. They've always done RBI. Oh, that's a good point. Why the heck? What? Yeah, well, that's RBI a good point. is done by Major League Baseball. Like Major that's League right Baseball too. actually yeah, right. put that out. But that's oh, the only that's two point. games. But, I, but the thing is, is like... I think there was a little bit of pressure put on them that maybe like, hey, we're going to actually... Because, okay, so Major League Baseball put RBI out. And it was kind of yeah. like they went and got a developer to put that game out. Mm -hmm. But that's it. It's that and, and MLB The Show. Yep, and I think point. they might have said like, hey, we're going to open this up to a lot more people and bring in a lot more people to do this unless 
you know, we, we, we shared a wealth. And I could be, yeah, I don't, I don't think, they, sure. I don't think, I think you're right. I think, I think that was in part of some of the articles as well is that like they wouldn't have, Sony wouldn't have gotten the license. Like they yeah. would not have been allowed the license if they were going to continue to make an exclusive game. So they had to, so they had to open it up. So yeah. re- regardless of how it kind of came about, I think that the topic is really interesting because there are a number of, um games that well this one um mlb the show is actually made by a first party of sony's yeah there are a number of, of games that are exclusive to ps4 that are not made by first parties at all and it'd be really interesting to see some of those come on over i think yeah. like with microsoft you see a bunch of those first party um games come on over um or in the blind forest of course minecraft is kind of the classic like there's no exclusive theirs at all but i think like a game like until dawn from ps4 would be right at home on the Switch, dude. Yeah. I think people would absolutely go nuts yeah. about that. But I don't know if we're talking like more like there's really no other sports franchises, so it's just any exclusives. Yeah, kind of and I think the, the I think the only thing like I, I think when you when I in my mind's eye, what I thought of a topic like this, I thought the easier access point is a game like Bloodborne. Um, yeah, that even though it's exclusive to Sony because Sony bought the rights to it. Could you see where, like a Bloodborne 2, where they just go, hey, we're putting this one out on multiple platforms. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know how ingrained those relationships are. Because at at one time, Square Enix used to have that type of relationship where there was a lot of exclusive stuff because a lot of stuff was published by Sony. But then as time went on, that that stuff kind of disappeared. Um and now it's to the point where you get a game on Xbox as well as PlayStation, like almost, almost day and date with mm-hmm. each other, um, which wasn't the case before for, for yeah. Square Enix. Before everything went right to Sony, and that's it. Like everything went to Sony. Now yeah. it's opened up and it's across the board all over the place. So I, I, when I think about it, I think that's the easier nut to crack than anything. Sure, because I don't think that Sony. I really don't think that Sony is for, as forthcoming as they want to be. Like, I feel like they're one of those companies that are be, being dragged, kicking, and screaming. Kind of, kind of looks like Nintendo, doesn't it? It kind of reminds you of Nintendo. It does. Like they're like, we have our way, and it works. Yeah, so and, don't and make us change. Exactly. And I feel like even though they just started doing crossplay, I feel like they were pressured into that. Oh, big time! I, I don't think they want to do crossplay at all. Yeah, it was they, only because of a powerful Nintendo and a powerful Xbox at the yeah. same time. Yeah. But like in a in a two party system, you're like it's pretty easy to go. Mm-mm, no thanks. Yeah, I'm out. Yeah, and and so I don't know how easy it is. I, I well, let me just back it up. I don't think it's easy at all for Nintendo to even attempt to try to get first party games um, brought over. This just happens to be a fluke in my eyes. Um, of course, of course. Yeah, no. This is. I mean, it's just. I think that it's just a playful kind of topic. And yeah, yeah. No, like no, no. I know, the, I know. But but I like to kind of like just lay it out there and go. Yeah, like because I don't want to be like, hey, man, I want God of War, and everybody's like, exactly. yeah, that's never gonna. Well, of course, that's not gonna happen. I, so I want to have a little bit of realistic in why I'm thinking. I got gotcha. you. When I'm thinking behind it. Um, well, here's 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 a thing that's gonna happen. I did a bit of a Justin Masson type of uh, blueprint preparation for this one. Okay, this is the only one I did it for, by the way. Um, so Disney's takeover of the world is gonna continue on. Their domination of the world is gonna continue on. They will eventually gain the rights of Spider Man. They will they will pull that out of Sony Pictures' hands and and their their clutches. They're gonna own it and they're gonna say to Sony, "You're making Spider Man." For everyone, not just for Sony PlayStation fans. I think Spider-Man, of all the properties, of all the exclusives, of all the things, Spider-Man is one of the things is like that really shouldn't be an exclusive. If you're just a fan of like uh, like because Spider-Man is so ubiquitous, he's so universally loved mm-hmm. that he should be on everything. But he's he's locked it on a on a PlayStation. I get the 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 deals and everything and and the ownership of it all. But Spider-Man on freaking Nintendo Switch would be amazing. Because what are we left with? The only Spider-Man game that we got on, on, on a Nintendo platform is Maximum Carnage, and everybody knows it, Bobby. It's the yeah. only one. It's the only other option. Yeah, I think... Man, I don't know that that would ever happen. Of course not. None of these are well, going to happen. Well, no, 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 no. I don't mean that. I don't mean that. I mean, I am going as far as saying, like, I don't know that Disney can even get Sony. Oh they'll, oh, they'll get it. They'll that's, get it. You don't worry be, about that. I can't even. Well, you know what? Never say never because. Exactly. They own Simpsons now. They own They own part of you, I think. Uh, they, the last I checked. they don't, I think they own part of you, me, Capri. <laughs> um, to be, truth be told, I let them buy us. That's, uh, yeah, so that is a possibility. I mean, who knows? <laughs> Especially for a couple of years or Sony Pictures was really hurting for money. So who yeah, knows? Yeah, exactly. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I think I think you're 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 beating on the on the right spot. I, I think that like the other thing too, because I th- I don't think people look at a game like Crash or Spyro as because I think it it, it hasn't had that exclusivity in mm-hmm. so many years. But I'll be honest with you, like when we got those games, I was shocked. I was yeah. shocked to see that we got crashed. The Crash Bandicoot Trilogy, and then Crash Bandicoot Racing, and then the Spyro. Like, that stuff actually threw me off when it got announced because I was just like, wait a minute, how did Sony let this happen? Mm -hmm. And I do wonder how Sony let some of that. Like, that's stuff that was, that would almost be like Nintendo, like, allowing stuff, some of their stuff that was exclusive and I don't want to say exclusive in terms of like, because I mean, you look at Banjo and stuff, and that stuff was exclusive at one time to Nintendo. But with Crash, I feel like it's a little bit different because Crash was like the mascot of Sony for a while. Mm-hmm. And it's like, how does a game like that get out of their grasp? Like, how do they not own that IP? How do they not go? Like, I got news for you, man. If there was a game that was on a Nintendo franchise that, or on the Nintendo IP or console, that Nintendo was basically like, this is our poster child. Man, I don't think that character ever leaves Nintendo. They find Definitely a not. way to buy that character. And how how Sony kind of, in my mind, kind of dropped the ball with that one doesn't... I don't understand it. I don't get how we get to that point. But um, So that was the first step for me before MLB, because that was it made me go like, we're living in times now where everything is upside down. Where what yeah. we knew as kids is like this is exclusive, this is and I feel like it makes it so difficult for a company like Nintendo to go, hey, this is exclusive to to our console, because mm-hmm. then everybody's like, well, why can't I play it over here? Like every now and again, you would always hear like, I mean, as far as Breath of Breath of the Wild, like people would be like petitioning Nintendo to put Breath of the Wild on PS4, and everybody was like. Of course that wouldn't happen. But nowadays, yeah. it's like, with all this cross stuff, it's like, well, I can see why people ask for stuff. Yeah. Because it's like, we live in this world now where everything gets ends up on everybody's plate. Um, oh, man. As far as, though, like, bringing stuff over. Like, I wonder, like, Insomniac, that's, that's, that's a PlayStation first part or... First now they are yeah yeah but i was thinking because that's that's uh, the spider-man thing but also sunset overdrive okay. is another game that i think nintendo fans would really really like man it's just yeah. this really playful like sandboxy type of game and it's uh i actually think it's maybe a better fit on nintendo because the xbox fans were looking for a different type of game or a, a game to fill a different uh, scratch a different itch but all the itches are scratched on nintendo switch yeah that's it you can scratch your itch with Nintendo well, Switch, Bobby. I think that I think there. I, I don't necessarily believe that. I think that there is something that's missing from Nintendo that Sony does really well, and that's no. You're probably no. You're probably right. I, I'm speaking in a hyperbole no, as no, well, no, no, but, no. It, but not but, in the same way that. But but what I want to say is like the third person, very story driven, narrative based games that Sony. Of course, does. Nintendo doesn't do those at all. So. What's the game? Oh my god, my mind went blank and I can't think of it. And you played it. I think you got a platinum on it. It's one of the early games that came out. Infamous. That's it. That <coughs> is that one. That's Sucker like, Punch. Sucker su- Punch. But and Sucker Punch is a first party. Mm-hmm. And I wonder how well that game did for them in terms of like, is that a game you go, hey, you know what? We're a bunch of years removed. Do we push that onto? A yeah. Nintendo console because to give it like a second life because I think like to me when I think of Infamous I, I, people are going to very strongly disagree with me but like of all the franchises that are Sony exclusives mm-hmm. Infamous to me doesn't always come to mind um, like I think Uncharted and Last of Us and sure. God of War and now Horizon and all these big budget huge games that infamous to me doesn't always speak first off like that is not always top tier. Now there's diehard PlayStation people that'll vehemently disagree with me. I know that. But from the outside looking in, I go, that's one that I could see, you know, boom. 
mm-hmm. you know, over there, you know. So it's a little, it's a little different, you know. So yeah, but I don't know what else otherwise. What what you could finagle to come over. I really do think that there's uh, there's room with Sunset. And then the other thing that I think people have also asked for, maybe you've asked for as well, Sunset. I'm sorry, uh, Sea of Thieves. Yeah. Sea of Thieves, with, yeah. With, I mean, with the rare connection, of course. Um, and I, don't, I feel like that game is built to scale as well. Like, there's a, you can play that game on PC for sure. So um, I think there, it, it would scale all the way down to um I don't see Switch. why that game doesn't. Yeah, because that mm-hmm. game doesn't look like it's very hardware you know, I mean, it's it's gorgeous, like it's it's yeah. good looking, but yeah. yeah, but yeah, it's it, it's the cartoony f- kind of factor that you yeah. could really you, you could make it look fine without really taking away a tremendous amount of detail. It's true. It's not like you're looking at the at at, at a tremendous amount of foliage, Bobby, or, no, or, or yeah, grass yeah. and yeah. everything like that. Yeah. So I, yeah, I think I think that would be great, and I think um, the more sort of uh, party base kind of just let, let's all get together and play as, as friends. Like that's Sea of Thieves. I think that's what that's the rare everybody was hoping for. I think in in yeah. a weird way. I don't think Sea of Thieves is the game everybody wanted, but that is the type of game um, that Rare can do in mm-hmm. the future. It's just bringing people together and making them have a good time. Yeah. Um, okay, so the next one kind of is similar in topic yep. with Todd Oxer, and I kind of want to bring that into this mix a little bit too. And and that's with Sony playing nicer lately. What would you like to see Nintendo and Sony partner on? Um, mm. And for me, I think I want to take this from not a Nintendo perspective. I want to take this from a Sony perspective, a little bit of, bit of a twist in my answer. And if I'm Sony, I am going to Nintendo and I'm going, man, we would love it if you could make, like we would fund it, we would pay for it, which is, again, very different. We want you to make a PlayStation exclusive VR game for us. And oh we yeah, you, man. We want you to just here's the dev kit, here's what you do, and we want Good you one. to create something for PS VR. Because Damn. that to me is what is lacking from you know from VR. That's amazing, dude. Yeah, I've said the same. I've said the same thing for years that Nintendo will unlock the keys to VR. Though yeah. they are the reason why it's not mainstream is because Nintendo hasn't done anything. And of course, and but when I've said that in the past, I've thought like, well, they have to make their own VR headset. But of yeah. course, like this makes a lot of sense, dude. That's yeah. a, I I think I I had a couple other thoughts, but I don't know that I can really top <clears throat> top that really. Like I was I mean, thinking, like what if what if what if Nintendo made uh, Mario and Sonic go to the Olympics, like for all the like for all the platforms? Like that's where my head was. Well, at. Like, yeah, that's- yeah. But this, but in his in his mind, he's basically saying, what par- what? Yeah, I can't say a partner of Sony. Yeah, I, I like the way you kind of like because you're you've kind of gone the other way, which I which I really like because usually it's just like what can we get? Yeah, if yeah, we're Nintendo. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, like how do you leverage like your properties in a way that w- could, in your answer, like actually change the industry? Yeah, like really show because I think there's a couple of VR games. What's the um the robot one? I can't remember the name of it, but everybody says it's the Mario sixty four of VR and things like that. Oh, and it's I like it would be great yeah, for yeah, yeah. it'd be great for Nintendo to like really show us like what that is because yeah. I don't even I don't even think people have any idea. Like well, what the thing, Super Mario sixty four VR would be the thing. The thing for me is that I think that where these game companies are, where Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo are right now, is for years they fought against each other. And I think if if I'm these guys, man, I need to find a way for the three of us to collectively continue on. Mm-hmm. You have serious competition coming with Google and Apple. Yeah. If they get serious, and with Facebook gaming, let's be honest, like you watch the Game Awards and you saw a lot of games, a lot of Facebook gaming games show up, right? We know that Facebook owns Oculus. Yeah. If I'm these companies, I'm going, this is scary times for us because we're not sure what the future holds. Mm -hmm. We need to find a way to, as a collective team, work together. And what the three of them together could accomplish is earth shattering in my mind. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like you look at, and I, I mean, hell, even if you like, you look at Sony with the VR side of things, you look at Xbox with all the online and the X cloud thing. And you look at Nintendo with the games and those three companies, if they can find a way to find a common ground to kind of work together, they could ward off Google and Apple. Now I have no doubt they will. Yeah. Of the, of the, 
the three, Facebook, Apple, Google. Um, Google I'm not worried about at all. Yeah. I think that they are very um, very childlike in terms of what they do with their business. They get into something, they tinker with it a little bit, and if it doesn't explode and take off, they move on very quickly. Yeah. Um, we've seen this in the past with some of their – they're different things. Like, they were supposed to be, I don't know if you know this or if you remember this, they were supposed to be a part of Pokemon Go. And I don't remember that. They were a partner with Nintendo. And, like, they were supposed to Google Glass or Google Glasses. Of course. Was supposed yep. to be a part of it and all this. And, I mean, whatever happened oh, to Google yeah, Glasses. that's right. If you yeah. remember, Google Glasses was supposed to be this next big innovative thing. And, like, it's dead. Like, nobody Yeah, and they shut it. down Google Dream, Daydream, yeah. the, the VR little headset. So, yeah, yeah man. They've, they, they're, they're, and Apple actually has kind of like been sticking with whether or not they've been good at it or not is up for debate. But um, Apple's been with the gaming thing for a bit. Yeah. Like, they, they've continuously tried to push it through on your phone or on Apple TV or whatever. And even yeah. now, our Apple Arcade is the latest iteration of probably something that is the closest to something that resonates to gamers. Yeah. So probably, maybe, potentially a little something there. Yeah. But um, but it's funny because you broke it down really well a moment ago to say, like, what does Nintendo have to offer? Like, they've got the games. Yeah. Like, in terms of, like, partnership, like, they're not offering up any technology. No. Like, they're not taking, like, no network specialty or no, like, the handheld that business they've, they've mastered because the games on it yeah. are the best. Yeah. Like, if, if it's just about, like, mastering um, a good handheld, I would argue that even, like, the Vita, the hardware itself is probably even more impressive in terms of like its form factor and mm-hmm. it's um the, the the screen and everything like that but of course the switch is way better yeah i don't want i want to be very clear about that i don't want to even people mince my words a little bit to say that the vita is better not even close but the vita was a very impressive piece of hardware so I mean, to cut you off real quickly when you looked at the 3ds versus the vita yeah that's the 3, what i'm saying that's the prime example the 3ds mm-hmm. versus the vita is prime example they both launch at the same time Vita was ten times more powerful than mm-hmm. the three DS, but the three DS should have been over. Knocked its dick in the dirt because it basically. <laughs> Good God! <laughs> I mean, let's 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 not let's not sugarcoat it. Um, ultimately, because of the fact that <laughs> that the games were better, and that's what it all boils down to is games. So. You're worried about your YouTube channel being I'm not, not worried about it at or, all. I'm right, not worried about it at all. Trust me. So we're we're, we're going to make sure that we're, we're going to make sure that I don't get fined. <laughs> all right, good. Yeah, um, no, it's fun. Okay, so next topic we got is from Brendan Myers, and he says, "If we ran Nintendo, how would we make newly acquired Switch owners and those who are considering buying a Switch have confidence that Nintendo is going to have games coming forward in the new year?" Um. I mean, I think it's. I, I think Nintendo does a pretty good job of getting the word out there of games, and they have a. Although fans aren't happy enough or happy with the amount of content that they give us, or the amount of um, Nintendo directs that they put out there, or how long they take to tell us stuff, like ever since the the days of the Nintendo Power, or we'll yeah. go back before that, the Nintendo Fun Club. That was the, the little pamphlet that they used to send us once a month or whatever, once every other month. Even from back in those days, what they've been able to accomplish to get it out there for people to be on the forefront of knowing what's going on. Nintendo Directs, to me, are the be-all, end-all. That I is agree. the where it is, that's where it's going to stay, and that's where it's always going to be. What I would move forward to do if I were Nintendo is I would with I would put a pamphlet, a brochure in every single switch. They don't do this enough. They don't they did it with the magazines. Like you would buy a, a Super Nintendo, you'd open it up and there'd be this little brochure for Nintendo Power. Mm-hmm. They should do that with every single switch that's sold that goes, "Hey, subscribe to our Nintendo channel over on YouTube. Hit the bell, all that stuff. Keep an eye out for these Nintendo Directs and and Break it down so mom and pop that don't know what the Nintendo Direct is, they can see. And mm-hmm. then they might even go on YouTube and look it up and go, oh, look, at this was the last Nintendo Direct that just happened a few months ago. Oh, look at all these games that are coming out. Like, that's the way that I would handle it. Like, I feel like Nintendo needs to get better and more savvy with their PR. And don't get me wrong, they, they have some great PR. But I feel like you're basically, the person's coming and buying something. Give them information to walk away with so they know, hey, this is where you find all our news. And then do something like you have the thing for – also, 
follow us on Twitter and like have a little postcard that goes in every console that breaks down where people can get all the information because it's different for you and I, like we know because that's what we do. This is, we love it. We follow it. We're, we're, we're enamored by it, but for the new person that's buying a switch that doesn't know, you know what I mean? Like there's a guy that I work with, right? There's a guy I work with that's been talking about getting a switch for the past couple of months, but he mm-hmm. would, other than asking me, he would have no idea where to get information. Like yeah. I just sent my nephew and niece switches for Christmas. They're not going to have any idea about a Nintendo Direct and what a Nintendo Direct is and and all that. Like my my nephew's been playing Xbox and, and PS4 for the past 10 15 years. He doesn't know anything about Nintendo per se. So yeah. other than messaging me going like, "Hey, what's good games to get?" Like he would have no other follow through to it. So I feel like that's something that Nintendo needs to work on a little bit. And that would be something that I would enforce is Nintendo Direct is our future. This is what we do. Here's where you go find them. Yeah, I, I, I'm curious where the uh, – Brandon Myers, I'd love for you to, to message us on the Discord or on Twitter or something. I'd love to know where this is really coming from. I feel like there has been tremendously clear that there are games coming out all the time. Like there's, We've n- done nothing but talk about a deluge of games at all at all times. But I guess if it's – if you're outside, if I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of somebody who's outside, like, our world, then, like, perhaps there's a disconnect. Maybe maybe there's people out there who don't know that there are games coming out. But to me, if that is the case, to me, the push is um, a little bit more, I would say, maybe even modern in that, what can you do with my Nintendo? Like, that's the membership. Mm-hmm. That's the, like, I'm becoming part of something, and then I'm essentially, like, opting in. So you have to dangle a bit of a better carrot yeah. to say put your email address in here and create an account for my Nintendo. And I think they've, they've done a decent job. Um, but I think it's been difficult to communicate the coins system. Yeah. I think that's been a bit of a tricky uh, scenario. And, but once you are in my Nintendo, like I get emails all the time. I get stuff all yeah. like throughout the entire year about like, uh, they just had a great sale on that. I was, uh, you know, filling my wish list with, with stuff because I'm too chicken to just pull the trigger on some of these stupid games. But that's a whole other story. Yeah. But I feel like I'm getting constant communication that, there are games in all sorts of types of games, and yeah. and maybe it's the like how they how they insert that more. It's a balance, man, because you can't be too pervasive yeah. to it. You can't be you can't just like invade somebody's space to tell them about all the things that they can buy. Yeah. So I think for I think it matches up for people who are in it and want to know more. There are ways to get satiated in that way, but for people who are aren't in it, they don't want to be inundated with yeah. the stuff. They they'll know that they want to go buy a game. They'll go search for a game. Yeah. I. Yeah, I, that's the thing that I, I agree completely. I like, don't, I, you think about how many games people buy yeah. in a year. Like, we buy tr- a tremendous number of games. Yeah, Most people is like two or three. Yeah. I just tried to convince my parents that they need to take their Xbox 360 out from their TV and, like, think about maybe even a Blu-ray player. They're like, why would we do that? And I'm like, I guess this conversation's over. <laughs> it was so, like, it just, we were talking completely different languages. Man. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, I mean, yeah, I guess uh, we can play NHL 12. Cool. Sounds awesome. <laughs> Like, that's where we're at, man. They like the avatars on there. Yeah. That's, that's, that's it. Listen, that's, that's what it's all about. Don't um, worry. Yeah, I, I just, I don't, I don't see Nintendo, like, like you said, there are people that will play two to three Nintendo games a year and that's it. And then there's guys like us that play, you know, hundreds of hours and, and, you know, all kinds of games. Like Nintendo did this really cool thing where they did their year in review thing for mm-hmm. every, for every customer. Yeah, and basically broke down like these are your top games you played in 2019, and this is the hours you played in 2019, and here's how many coins you earned in 20. Like it was just, and then nuts. some of your, what your friends played, or some of the. I think they did a good job of recommending titles at the end of it too. There were mm-hmm. games that were on that list that I hadn't played yet, and I can't remember how they linked it to uh, like why why it was there if yeah. it was something I might like or something like that. But I think that I think they do a great job, honestly. I think yeah. they do a really good job of of pushing things to you. So I'm really curious if um, we can follow up on this, maybe on a future episode in a yeah. early segment of where, where this comes from. I'm yeah. not sure where the concern comes from. Exactly. Um, okay. So final topic we have for this week is from Todd Oxtra. And he says, if we ran Nintendo, what do you think of the idea of a switch pro that not only improves the specs of the display adding more Ram and storage, but leverages a dock that actually provides an extra oomph to achieve 4K on TV and provides a way to get into the high-end games on Switch. This is we'll such... I, I mean, obviously the answer is we want it, and that's fine. I, but I feel like it is such a touchy area mm-hmm. because you have to be careful. 
Nintendo is in a weird area right now where you have to be able to... You have so many people buying Switches right now for Christmas. I mean, Black Friday was the number one console sold. Yeah. Um, and it's selling like gangbusters. Expect like they just launched in China, did fifty thousand units the first day. Like they're doing amazing things around the world, and all this. I I feel like they're in such tough area that like me as the gamer, yes, I want this. But me as the person that's playing the role of like the CEO, um. It's very touchy because of the fact of, like, you can't leave people behind. Mm -hmm. If I buy a brand new Switch for Christmas, or I get one for Christmas, and then I find out six months later that there's a new one coming out that can play in 4K and that can do all this stuff. And then, by the way, man, so-and-so is going to put a brand new game on the Xbox or the Xbox Series X and PS5, and then... I can't play it on my Switch, but the Switch Pro can handle it, and they can play it. It, it runs into this weird territory where you're gonna uh, you're gonna basically off kilter. It's the same thing that 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 Sony and and play or Xbox ran into with when they when they went into the area of like let's go to the Pro and let's go to Xbox One X. You know, you these games have to be backwards compatible. You have to still you still have to appease the other people as well so i feel like that's where nintendo's in a little bit of a jam if they would have done something i feel like where if they would have rolled out new switches every year uh and did something similar like what we were talking where like like treat it like a mobile phone or a tablet like apple does Mm -hmm. i think you can get away with it but when you wait too long you start to confuse people and I feel yeah. like they're like they needed to set that message and that tone that we're going to upgrade this thing every single year, and every year you're going to have the opportunity to buy a new one and either get the latest and the best. Because with a phone, with Apple, like you go so long and then they go like, "Hey man, the we're up to eleven now. Hey man, the six is cut off. Anything mm-hmm. anything six and down can't handle games from this and up. And, and people that own phones and own mobile, they get it now." They understand. The first couple times you say it, it bothers people, but then they go, hey, I, you know what? I need to upgrade anyway. So they just upgrade. Yep. And let's be honest. We're upgrading our phones for the dumbest upgrades. It's yeah. not. It's so <laughs> ingrained that we have to do it now. They're like, there's no need yeah. to upgrade our phones. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I, I wanted to buy the 11. The guy, the, one of the guys I work with, just went to the, to, the, to the Apple store to go upgrade. He's talking to the guy, and the guy's like, actually... The 10X, the, the XS Max is actually better than the 11s. Like, is it really? Yeah, he's like, just stay with what you have. See, that's, that's confusing. That's the thing people and should be outraged about. So that's where, the, what I'm saying is people are upgrading phones at the drop of a hat. If Nintendo would have instilled that this is the this is the, the model we're going after, I think it eliminates some confusion. But here we are now three years later. We're getting in, ready to move into year four. If they put a pro out that... Games are only exclusive to the pro and can't play on both. They're going to have problems. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think it's worth calling out. I know you know this, but it's you know the the the, com- the comparison between like the constant upgrades of phones and, and the consoles and where we're going is always brought up. But the the thing that is worth mentioning at the very least is that we buy phones in a much different way. We don't. Yeah. Dr- most people don't walk in and drop twelve hundred dollars on a phone every two or three years. Like they build it into their mm-hmm. their monthly plan, and so. That's where Xbox, like they actually have like that all access, uh, all for one or whatever the hell it's called. Yeah. Um, they're naming conventions, Bobby. Don't even get me started. If we were on Xbox in a car, it'd be a totally different story. Um, but you can pay for your Xbox and your memberships with Xbox, like Game Pass and Xbox Live, with a monthly payment, mm-hmm. and that has you rolling into like bringing bringing the console home at zero cost. And so I'm wondering if that's where Nintendo needs to be headed. If the, if really, and of all the three uh, platforms. Nintendo is is the casual market. They're the people who are buying phones blindly every couple of years. Yeah. Like they're kind of like they're. I don't want to be insulting to that to that market, but they're not as they're not as savvy as us. They're not as they're not as like with it in terms of like every single detail and the dates and everything. They just sort of like see the poster and and know that it's time for an upgrade and they kind of yeah. do that. Um, and I think that would work with Nintendo. I think it's the same. What I'm trying to say is I think it's the same type of audience. Yeah. They and I don't know that it's too late but you need to pick a pivotal moment when you're about to to make that change 
Yeah. And with Xbox, they're doing it now. Like it's clear that this is going to be that. To me, I think it's clear. Every year, we're going to get a new Xbox, yeah. or every other year that there there will be a set cadence. So whatever the new switch is, you kind of have to choose that moment to go. Now things are different. Yeah. The old console generations are gone, yeah. and but Xbox has been doing that. They've been talking about like removing generations yeah. um, in the past. So I don't even remember what Todd's question was um, anymore. Do we want to? Uh, uh, a Switch Pro dock or something like that. I think well, you're right. Saying, that yeah, he's should... saying he's saying uh, it adds all the improvements that you would typically get out of a Switch, but leverages a dock that actually provides the extra oomph to yeah. achieve 4K on the TV. I mean, that's the thing. If it's just in the dock, right, mm-hmm. and it's upresing games to 4K, like like an Xbox One S, essentially, yeah. like those games don't run natively in 4k but they can up res to 4k and they can change then that makes sense to me and I'm we all okay thought that's that. what it was going to do to begin with we all thought that that's what was going to happen because we yeah. started seeing like there's other technologies out there that are very similar to that that you you dock a thing and then it becomes it actually has like hardware processing in yeah. that thing actually the surface laptop is like that a lot too you yeah. plug it into the keyboard and it and it oops it up a little bit so i think for sure but i echo your your sentiments that we have to be careful because very quickly in my mind as i'm starting to put together i'm like this is starting to feel kind of like a sega system mm-hmm. like with like it like the frankenstein just like this piece does this and you attach this piece and it does this so like we saw how that all worked out but on the other side of that coin is like, it's kind of like what nintendo likes to do like they've done add-ons before. Like they've done so. I I I am mixed on this. So I like your I like your measured approach to it. I want it, but things are kind of things are working right now, dude. Things are really working. Because this is the other the, the other thing that could actually hurt them in that aspect is you sit there right and you put this thing out. You're gonna have so many people that are gonna go. Well, why can't I just buy the dock? Yeah. Not realizing that, like, obviously there's some technology in the new Switch that allows for this up and all this stuff. But then you're going to have people going, like, well, why can't they do an update to my Switch and I just buy the dock? Why do I have to spend a $300 or $400? <laughs> and you run into these weird areas where mm-hmm. people, because, listen, it's the same thing that's happening right now with the X- Xbox Series X where everybody's attacking Xbox right now, acting very stupid, like they don't know what's going on. and. Yeah. They're trying to foreshadow and cause drama in the Xbox world to convince people that it's a bad console because of the naming convention. Sure. It's a similar thing that could happen. Like, it happened at the Wii U. Yeah, people t- try to manufacture confusion for yes. sure. And my th- my other consideration is, like, how much would this cost? Like, yeah. what would you – if it was an improved dock – I feel like they've priced themselves out of this right, right out of the gates because they priced the freaking dock at, like, $90 or something. It doesn't do anything. It just sends a video signal to the – to the TV and it charges the thing. So if you put some hardware in there, oh, I think like is that a, is that a two hundred fifty dollars genius? What they did because of the course, dock because the, the dock costs nothing to make. Let's of be course. honest. So of course, if they so let's just say hypothetically they're selling the dock for eighty bucks for in the United States it's eighty bucks, right? Yeah, they're selling this thing for eighty bucks. So then they go, okay, we're going to keep selling the next one for eighty bucks when the tech isn't that expensive to do. No, you know what I mean like, and it, it, okay, so let's say. Right now, that dock that dock probably costs Nintendo, to be fair, probably fifteen bucks to make. That's what I was thinking. Right, <laughs> twelve, fifteen bucks. Yeah. For sure. So, so let's just say fifteen. There's mm-hmm. a huge markup on this thing because they're selling yep. for eighty. Yep. Now we 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 do this one for upresing, right? That's probably let's say a forty fifty dollar dock. They're still making money. For sure, for sure, I I think it's um I think it's going to be a little bit more depending on what you actually want this thing to do. Yeah, it's got to be like because it's 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 you're going from like no hardware like there's nothing like we're talking nothing. This thing is plastic and a couple connectors. Yeah, and, to and putting it, some sort of like processing fair, power. It's an HDMI hookup, a USB, and a power. That's all yeah, that's man. in that thing. <laughs> It's not e- it, there's no tech in this thing. I that's what I'm saying. So yeah, like but to go to anything, anything that's going to upres or anything, you're going to have some sort of like memory system, you're going to have to have some sort of power system in there as well. Like yeah. it's it's going to be a, a a different it's going to be a different beast. So yeah. when we really think about this, maybe I don't want this at all. Yeah. And that's kind of what I'm trying to say is that like to sell it then you build it and to sell it, you now have a switch which the only one that can dock is like the the base switch. Which is what two ninety nine in the states, yeah, two ninety nine, and then one ninety nine for the Switch Lite. Yeah. So two ninety nine, and then you go if you want the upgraded version, it's one hundred fifty bucks, two hundred bucks. 
So your your all in package is starting to get a little too close to um, to the Xbox One Series or the Xbox Series X. I mean, if they it, although maybe that's not too bad. <laughs> I mean, me being me being the consumer, the consumer side of me, if they were mm-hmm. to tell me that for another hundred dollars, so three ninety nine, yeah, I get a more powerful console, can upraise the four K, uh, I'd buy it. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. even think about it. I wouldn't even yeah. think about it. Because yeah. I'm already, I mean, dude, I'm already buying the lesser version at $200 a clip. So mm-hmm. for me just to go, all right, I got to switch if I spend an extra 100 bucks, So I buy for 400 Because for me, I would trade my original my original switch in. Yeah. I would trade that in and get, oh, the, for sure. and get the more powerful one. Um, what I wonder is, is it enough? Like, really, what we would be trying to do is is maintain relevance in this new era, where we're work, we're like we're going to 4K. Like that's just happening. 60 frames per second is going to be standard across the board, and so Switch has to remain like it has to keep getting these third party games. Yeah. And so, is this going to do that? Yeah. I guess is really the the question. It's like this seems very like if we're going to do it, it'd be short term. Yeah. And and knowing that it's like a bridge towards like the next. Yeah. The next switch, because the hard like the the tablet itself has to has to continue to play the games that 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 will come out. So I'm trying to think of like some of the annualized games that that it'd be interesting to see um, get phased out of Nintendo Switch. I'm trying I'm just trying to remember a third party that is like putting games on Switch, but maybe wouldn't like the um, like wrestling games come to mind for sure, or like well, the NBA the games. Like it's some the two K well, wrestling. Are- 2K games are probably the only games that are they're annualized it? on the Switch. They've been so coming out. Ones. Yeah, FIFA's basically they're putting out like a legacy yep. edition, which people are pissed about. Um, but 2K has been putting out a new 2K every single year on the Switch. Probably be the the most reasonable thing. When you, you just worry it. about like the way that the Wii ended. Like the the trajectory of the Wii and the quality of games was like everybody loved all the games at the start, and then we started to think like it's kind of it really is underpowered, and we're kind of moving on and all these things. And by the end, it was the bargain bin type yeah. of stuff. Yeah. And so, what I worry for Switch, and if they don't keep up with the t- technology, is that the Apple Arcade stuff just moves on over. Like just just mobile phones, just mobile games. Like that's all that you're gonna be able to get on Switch if they don't keep up with the t- like that. And then the first party stuff is gonna is gonna um. dominate library i think that nintendo is in a very safe spot for the time being for for a good foreseeable future and that's because of like two, two years like how long do you, how long do they have that they can be this underpowered in the new generation i think they can go through the entire i mean it, you're not going to agree i think they can go the entirety and there's there's two reasons first party games yeah and indie games until the that indie is games, indie games until does change the things. indie games move on to mm-hmm. PlayStation, but, but the convenience to port those games onto the Switch, and the fact that people prefer to play indie games on the Switch because of the ability to play it on the go, I think Nintendo is really in a position mm-hmm. that they are okay. Because even even though we got The Witcher Three, there's so many people that are just like, no, nah, I don't want to play it on the P on, on the Switch. But a lot of people do. But it's not make or break. Like, let's be yeah. honest. Nobody was like, I got to have Witcher 3 on the, on the Switch or I'm not going to buy a Switch. Nobody cared. <clears throat> We've passed that point, I feel, where huge, massive third-party games need to be on the Switch. So I think that Nintendo is really okay at this point. Um, as long as the... Now, if the indie games start to leave, they got problems. They better sound yeah. the alarms because they have so many games. Right now, they just did the count twenty five hundred games on the yeah. Switch. That's madness. That's madness. What mm-hmm. do you think of the Wii? The Wii was one of the biggest consoles that Nintendo's had in in recent years. That didn't even have that many games. Yeah, like we're only th- year three, twenty five hundred games in three years. That's crazy, dude. That mm-hmm. library, that library beats PlayStation. It beats Xbox, and it's. Those are those are systems that have been out for almost ten years, right? Mm-hmm. And here's a thing that's three years out the gates, and it's got the biggest library, one of the biggest libraries ever. Like the only thing that rivals it is Steam. Like it's nuts. So to me, as long as as long as the indie teams stay in the fold, I think Nintendo's fine. That's my opinion. That's a good point. Yeah, it's a good point. I think it's I think it's just a huge thing down the line. Mm-hmm. Who knows? And now the only thing that scares me with saying that is you're starting to see 
because I think Xbox and Sony both see it, and they're getting more aggressive mm-hmm. of going after indie developers. I think for a while they just was like, eh, we got the third parties. We get them, we get them, we don't, we don't. But I think now, there's, especially Xbox, I think bringing Damon Baker over kind of opened that a little bit, opened that door a little bit more. But, I mean, from, from when I was working with Jules at Image and Form, I mean, Image and Form, at, at Atui, I wish, Image and Form, please hire me, Image and Form. Now, but when I was working for Atui, the one thing I could tell you is that those systems of putting games on those consoles, they are not cohesive at all. They're not easy at all. Yeah. Nintendo is the easiest system to get stuff on. Um, Xbox, you can't get a hold of nobody in terms of, like, if you've run into jams or problems, you can't get a hold of people. Um, and then PlayStation, same thing. Like, I sat in a, I sat in a room with Colin Moriarty and Jules Watchum, and Colin asked him, why aren't you putting more games on the PlayStation? Why aren't you putting them on the Vita? And Jules just said, like, it's impossible to get a hold of anybody. If you have a problem, you, you like, forget about it. You can't. Yeah. The access. Now, I'm sure Nintendo, like, for you and me to go, like, well, who would you call it Nintendo? But for a developer, it's just it's just more easier. It's more I call fun. my uncle, for yeah, sure. maybe. Yeah, I'm, my I know uncle your uncle works, works in the, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so thing. just he'd hook me up for sure. Uncle so I think, I think that's the thing. Like, unless those companies loosen, and that's why it worries me with Damon Baker going to Xbox, because I feel like that's kind of where Damon's going to step in and go, like, we need to make it easier for t- companies to come here. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah. So that is all. Thank you guys for listening to another episode of If We Ran Nintendo. Thank you so much for all the support and all the everything for this year. This is the uh, we got one more episode. Does that episode hit? Uh, it hits the tail end of 2019. So we got one mm-hmm. more. Um, so almost end of 2019. But thank you guys. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever, whatever you celebrate, whatever holiday you do. Happy holidays to you guys all. Um, you can follow Mr. Sean Capri over on Twitter, Sean like Connor Capri like the pants. Check him out over on twitch.tv slash Sean Capri. Uh, you can follow me, Instagram, Twitter, and on Twitch at Nintendo Gurus. That is all. Uh, peace out, Preston. Peace out, Kirby.